Welcome guys, happy Saturday. Got a good video here for you. We're gonna be talking about the latest news and notes, injuries, fantasy football updates, everything you need to get up to speed on for fantasy football week seven. I can't believe week seven is here. Also, I really want to address a major concern that's going on in fantasy football that nobody else is talking about. We need to talk about this major concern, which includes committees everywhere. I need to discuss it. This is going to impact your fantasy football teams from now, this week, this season, and beyond. So we need to be aware of it and, and mitigate the risk of catastrophic failure due to this committee garbage that's going on, even at the quarterback position, which I'm going to get to in a second here, okay? So very important for fantasy football week seven. Now, if you do have any particular starts and sits questions, Drop them below. I'll try to get to as many as I possibly can and hit that thumbs up. It helps the channel. It takes one second of your time. Smash it, tap it, slap, hit the thumbs up. I looked at the algorithm and I looked at the stats. It looks like a lot of people are coming to this video watching but haven't actually clicked subscribe. I think it was like, I can't remember the percentage. It was like 20, 30% have not even hit subscribe yet. I got to go back and look at the data. But you guys got to hit the subscribe button because the only channel giving you the truth, everybody's just sugarcoating, BSing, fluffing stuff that's not going to help you win. So hit the thumbs up and make sure you guys get the counselor's edge. Last week, I only missed like three picks. Grab the counselor's edge if you guys are into sports bets. Get in on the action right now. I'm going to give you guys all my picks. Counselor's edge, I've linked it below, is going to give you guys a major advantage in bets. I give you my optimal uh, prop picks, my five favorite prop picks of the week, right? Player props, I'm going to give you guys uh, the picks against the spread and the straight up. So make sure you guys get the counselor's edge. You're going to get a login. You're going to get my access to my picks, okay? So let's get to it, guys. Hit the thumbs up. Let's talk about the latest news and notes here. And again, let's talk about also this issue that's going on. So let's start with the piece of latest news and notes that addresses and indicates that there's an issue going on. And that piece of news is that Russell Wilson is set to start. Where you're like, okay, great. Russell Wilson's back. But as part of that news is that Fields is also going to get action. I'm like, hold on a second. Hold on. We saw this, you know, with Taysom Hill getting some action wherever, whatever quarterback started, he comes in for the rushing plays or whatever. But why are we doing a quarterback by committee? Like, this is a bit of a problem. Like, I, I have a serious problem with this. Like, pick your starter and roll with him, right? Like, this is not good. And I like one thing that is running back by committee, which I really don't like. Okay. But now you've got quarterback by committee. And the reason I believe they're doing this is because this is genuinely the truth because there's these player prop stuff, right? That's popping up. So these sites, there's some, they're, they're invested. I believe they're teamed up with the NFL and they're invested and you can't have predictable stats. If you have predictable stats, Everybody wins. So if you have, let's say, your workhorse, which is, again, a dinosaur right now, dinosaur, there's not a lot of them. You know, Adrian Peterson, you can say, well, that's easy. He's easily going to get over, you know, 15 or fifteen touches, for example, right? That was when he was the prime workhorse. I'm using his, him as an example, right? So it's like now they're like, let's just do away with that. Let's add running back by committees and, like, really stir it up because they'll never know what's coming. I really believe that this is – it's not a conspiracy. I really believe that this is going on right now because, again, there's just so much money invested and tied up in these player prop stuff that they can't make it predictable. So this really kind of sent a flag for me. I'm like, okay, Russell Wilson starting, but I don't want to see fields. Like, why are we doing this committee? Which is absolute garbage. But we're going to see how this goes, how much time fields is going to get this week, how much time Russell Wilson. Are they going to be coming in and out? Something to monitor here as we head towards the future of fantasy football – and NFL and how they're going to be logistically playing these players in, at all positions. Okay, so that's a big piece of news. Russell Wilson should be activated and should be playing. Okay, let's go through some other news and notes here. Again, if you have any starts and sits questions, drop them below, okay? Uh, Deontay Johnson, he's a bit of a disaster. Now, he was dealing with an ankle injury, uh, ribs, and hamstrings. So there's other injuries popping up. So he's going to be questionable. Monitor that. Now, I am recording this at on Saturday morning. Things are going to continue to change from now until the start of the game. So I'm giving you, you know, I can record this now, but I got to spend family time. I was a wed wedding last night. I'm a little tired from that. If you guys haven't watched my Instagram, there's an amazing violin violinist there. And I'm like, dude, this guy is definitely playing for CMC owner. So it was a great wedding. Uh, brought the kids out and uh, we have a six month old and she, we're very fortunate. We put these, ear, uh, these headphones on that are like noise canceling and she was able to sleep you know, during the wedding. If you have a young child, man, it's, it's tough bringing them to a wedding, but it, it was a lot of fun. We had these ear, ear um, 
headphones on and she was able to sleep for most of the wedding and it was loud in there. So really, really glad that she was able to sleep. So, you know, I'm busy and stuff, but again, I'm getting this to you guys Saturday more, you know, morning, early afternoon. So again, news is going to change here. Okay. So again, starts to sit questions, drop them below. I'll try to get to as many as I can and try to keep you guys up to. I want everybody to win their leagues, right? That's the main thing. All right. Uh, Deontay Johnson, like I said, I just watched that, that, that situation. Ricky Parsall, he had the chest issue there. He's activated off IR. I don't know how much volume he's going to get. I wouldn't go and start him week one. We're looking at starts since week seven. He's not a guy I'd be considering, but uh, someone you could keep on your radar, maybe another waiver wire pickup or something like that uh, heading into the next week. But we'll see. Uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. fully participated in practice on Friday. He's kind of in the final stages of his concussion protocol. He should be a good, good to go this week. Check it out. He's been a big disappointment. A big part of that, I think, is Kyler Murray. Hopefully, he gets um, he gets some action. He had that one big week a couple weeks ago. We'll see if that's going to continue, okay? Uh, Lad McConkey has a hip issue going on. He was limited in practice but should play. Monitor that. Uh, Quentin Johnson might sit. This one did not participate Friday. He's dealing with an ankle injury. Uh, I, I think he's probably going to sit this one. Uh, Jordan Mason, I believe he should be playing. I think he's questionable. He's got a shoulder injury. A lot of these guys, you know, limited in practice or did part or did participate and they are questionable. How many reps they're going to get still to be, on, you know, seen. But this is something to be aware of. So if you are starting a guy like Jordan Mason, understand that he did bang up that shoulder. So, he, you know, but if he should play, okay. Cooper Cup should be good to go this week. Again, he's got the ankle issue. Uh, he is questionable, but if he does come back, my only concern is the limited reps, but if not, if they let him run free, he is the guy that's going to get the workload of volume there uh, with the Rams. Okay, so Cooper Cup could be activated again. Uh, Juju. Now, I was just hearing stuff about Juju. They, they are giving him praise, like he's doing so well, yada, yada. I'm not really sold on Juju, but desperate times call for desperate measures, and he should get the volume. Again, they, they believe in him, but he is dealing with that hamstring injury was limited in practice and is questionable to play, but should be good to go either way. Uh, also, quarterback here, a couple quarterbacks I want to talk about, again, some other wide receivers and some other news here I want to cover, but uh, Will Levis, his right shoulder, obviously that was bothering him. Now he's only good for super flex leagues. I would not go ahead and be crazy and start Will Levis, but he is questionable with that shoulder. If he doesn't play, Rudolph uh, should be in to cover him. And this is big news here. Anthony Richardson, his oblique, uh, with his oblique injury, is set to play. Now, what the coach was saying is that, oh, yeah, well, obviously Joe Flacco is really good, but AR is our quarterback. Anthony Richardson is like, he's not that good. So this is going to be a real telling tale. Like, you know, they pulled out a win or two with, with Flacco, and he's been consistent. He's been efficient, right? Like, He's a, he's a good game manager, Flacco. He's been in the league for a very long time. He's very experienced. He's not going to, you know, mess it up and throw a lot of interceptions, whereas you got the volatile and young Anthony Richardson who can't stay healthy and is just kind of throwing the ball up and hoping for a prayer. So, you know, I definitely see the upside of Anthony Richardson. I think he's a good player, but the NFL is just so much tougher. It's such a tough league, and... That's why out of a population of a U.S. of over 300 plus million people, there's only like 12 really good quarterbacks. Other than that, everything is, also, is a crapshoot. And that's why, you know, you got the Steelers going by quarterback by committee. So Anthony Richardson, we're going to really monitor and see how he's going to do. Maybe after his injuries, he'll settle down a little bit more. He's like, you know, I've got the speed of the NFL. I'm not going to be so crazy and throw a lot of picks. So something to definitely monitor, okay? Uh, other news, Tua. Tagaviola, they say tongue of Iloa, but I just I don't see the word tongue in there at all. But it's tag veil, like you have a veil on, like at a wedding, right? Tag veil oa. So to a tag veola is uh is is anyway, he's set to practice and scheduled to play for week eight at a time where guys like Tyreek, if you're a Tyreek Hill fantasy football owner, you need him to step up. So to uh Set to come back, and man, oh man. I mean, Tyreek's been brutal. He had a 12-pointer last week, but the weeks before that, couldn't score over twelve, over nine fantasy points for like four, three or four consecutive weeks. So uh, a lot of fantasy implications based on the return of two. Uh, I think Atchain is set to come back either. I, I don't know if I trust Atchain as well. Uh, Miami's a bit of a disaster. I never trusted their running backs. They're always kind of run by a committee. They've never gone with a workhorse, and they've shown us signs that they never will. 
So that's why I kind of faded out Shane, and he hasn't really given a return on investment at all this year as a top 10 running back, which I told you to fade, okay? So I, again, a ton of upside with certain players like Anthony Richards, who was a top five quarterback and out chain, but just have not delivered at all, and I've warned you guys about that. Speaking of upside, a guy that I was wrong on, now mind you, he wasn't as early as a draft capital as like an out chain or, or, uh, uh, or Anthony Richards said, is Calvin Ridley. Now Calvin Ridley's offensive coordinator, uh, Nick Holtz saying, they're going to want to involve him a little bit more. They said they want to get him, you know, in some of the quick game, some of the screens. Dude, I mean, you saw the press conference. I think it was last week where Ridley was saying, like, you know, he, he said the, the, a bad word and he was cursing, basically saying, like, I need to get the ball. And it's like, I don't know if Levis is even capable at this point. So, I mean, this is it. Like, I, I wouldn't even start Ridley this week. I don't even believe anything that these coaches are saying. It's like, okay. You're telling me that you're going to start him and you're going to use him more and he's supposed to get time. He got paid a ton of money and he's just not being used. So, again, very, very disappointing. Um, I'd like to see Ridley being used more. He's a great player, but he's just not getting the volume. And, and these players are limited in regards to how much volume you get. Like, I could be the greatest athlete of all time, but if I don't touch the ball, I'm just not going to put up any points. It's that simple, guys. It's basic math. Right, law of averages. Right, the more touches you get, the better you do. If I'm a sales rep and I'm making 100 sales calls, I'm like, hey man, like I'm trying to sell this pen, and it's like, okay, I get 99 no's. I'm probably gonna get a yes, maybe with the hundred. Right? Uh, what I'm getting some news here. Okay, so yeah, it looks like I just read here, Marvin Harrison. I got news here on my notifications. Marvin Harrison is cleared. That's what I just read here. Other news popping up on my screens because I was mentioning he was questionable. News is going to keep popping in throughout the day. That's why I try to get to your questions here below. Uh, but again, Ridley just needs to get action. Marvin Harrison needs to get action. Again, you just need the volume. You need to, you need to make those calls. If you have 100 calls, you're probably going to get a sale. Same thing, right? So anyway, it is what it is. And then my guy, which is not my guy anymore, I got rid of him after week three or four, is Zamir White. He's dealing with a growing questionable that could impact uh, Madison if you guys are thinking of starting Madison, if they come in and start using Zamir White a little bit more, giving him a shot, okay? So I, hopefully I got everything. I'm sure I missed a couple things, obviously, but the main thing, again, is you've got Tua coming back. You've got Wilson coming back. You've got some other guys coming off injury and concussion protocols and Cooper Cup. Look, watch that situation. Anthony Richardson. There's a lot of stuff going on here. I could probably hit refresh here on my news, and I bet you there might be some news here before we go. Again, if you are new to the channel, guys, smash it, tap it, slap it, hit the thumbs up. No, nothing really new here. Um, again, you want to start, when you look at starting sits, you want to start your most consistent players, guys that get the volume. Don't start guys that have had weeks to wow you and you're not wowed. Make sure you guys go with those consistent getters, those volume getters, okay? That's going to give you an advantage, right? And make sure you guys join the Council's Edge, guys, for all my picks I've linked it below here. Massive advantage. Get in on the bets, okay? Smash the tap and slap and hit the thumbs up. Drop your questions below. Hope you guys have an outstanding Saturday. I appreciate you guys. There's no fluff here. If you want the truth, straight to the point advice, this is the channel to do it. Hope you guys have a great day. We'll talk soon, guys.